Hi, I'm Christina and I will introduce our paper Inside Out Instrument Tracking for Surgical Navigation and Augmented Reality. We wanted to develop an Inside Out object tracking system working on augmented reality HMDs such as the HoloLens. Now, why do we want to do that? Our area of application is augmented reality supported surgical navigation. Surgical navigation systems usually aid surgeons in executing interventions by tracking medical tools in relation to the patient's anatomy. Conventional systems, however, display this navigation information on 2D screens placed around the operating site and therefore force the surgeon to constantly divide his attention between this navigation information and the patient. With an augmented reality HMD, the navigation information could be displayed directly in the view of the surgeon merged with the patient and the operating site. Thus, the surgeon can focus only on the patient. Compared to conventional surgical navigation systems, HMDs are also inexpensive and have a very slim form factor. And therefore, they can be employed outside of the operating room, opening up new areas of application. Now, I'm sure many of you are familiar with inside out tracking libraries for image fiducials, such as Euphoria or Aruco markers. So, could we just use these for tracking medical tools? Um, well, it has been shown that such off-the-shelf trackers are not that accurate. They have errors of several millimeters up to centimeters, which makes them unsuitable for most medical applications. They are also quite sensitive to uh, occlusions, different lighting conditions, and they have to constantly face the camera for tracking, which in practice limits the trackable movements of objects. So our idea is to track effective marker spheres instead which are already commonly used in commercial outside-in tracking systems, in particular also in the medical domain. Uh, this type of tracking is usually very accurate and robust. Um, it works like this. Um, the spheres are attached to medical tools and then tracked outside-in with cameras placed around the operating site. Now, instead of relying on those external tracking cameras, we want to use the HMT directly for tracking to keep all the advantages of the HMT's slim form factor. This leads me to our contribution. Uh, so we developed an AR system for inside-out macrosphere tracking, which does not rely on any external infrastructure at all. Instead, we use only the onboard sensors of a state-of-the-art HMT, the HoloLens 2. We show that our system is capable of real-time performance, unrestricted six degrees of freedom tracking, and millimeter accuracy. To accomplish this, we want to compute the six degrees of freedom pose of a marked surgical instrument with respect to the HoloLens. The HoloLens has four environmental tracking cameras. We use the two front-facing ones, left and right, and repurpose them as a stereo setup. The left and right cameras are unfortunately not synchronized. However, synchronization is important for stereo vision. Consequently, we implemented a single constraint at the time extended Kalman filter for tracking with unsynchronized frames. We found that this SCAD is also more accurate and faster than traditional stereo vision and therefore we track mainly with the SCAD and use the stereo vision pipeline only for initialization and reinitialization if the tracking in the SCAD is lost. Uh, to prepare for tracking, we need to compute two steps offline. The first one is stereo calibration. We compute the intrinsic parameters of the HoloLens cameras as well as the extrinsic, so the transformation from left to right. This calibration needs to be very accurate, and we found that the onboard calibration of the HoloLens is not sufficient. Instead, we use a calibration framework specifically for low resolution cameras. Uh, the second step is instrument definition. So we need to prepare the instrument by attaching set of marker spheres to it. Um, for our pose estimation, at least four or better five marker spheres with unique relative pairwise distances are required. Now we can move on to online tracking. <clears throat> the first step is the marker detection. We filter and threshold images from the left and right HoloLens camera and perform connected component search to identify a set of marker candidate X prime. To improve the runtime, we perform some of these computations on the HoloLens GPU, and we further use a linear Kalman filter to track region of interests around already detected markers, and then apply the marker detection only in those regions. If enough markers have been detected and the frames 
the difference, time difference between frames is below one millisecond, then the frames are candidates for both estimation for stereo vision. Here we basically use a classical triangulation approach where we first match markers between left and right frame based on the epipolar constraint. Second, we compute 3D points from the matched markers using optimal triangulation. <clears throat> and third, uh, we match the known markers of our instrument to the point cloud obtained in triangulation. And if this matching is successful, we can compute the instrument's pose by solving the absolute orientation problem. As already mentioned, we use the Stereovision pipeline only for initialization and reinitialization. Otherwise, we track with the SCAT. The SCAT is a filter which estimates the state Z of a nonlinear system using partial or incomplete measurements X prime. So for us, this means that we can process every frame we get from the HoloLens regardless of synchronization and regardless of how many markers are detected in the frame. So by using the SCAT, one frame with one detected marker is already enough to update the instrument pose. We describe the movement of the instrument using a position velocity model and therefore the state Z of the filter contains the position and rotation of the instrument at the current time. Then for each frame with a partial measurement X prime, the SCAT first performs a prediction, so it predicts the state Z hat at the current time. Then it back projects the state Z hat to the current frame, yielding a predicted measurement X hat. This measurement x hat is um, compared to the actual measurement x prime and the residual between those two measurements is computed. And finally, in the correction step, this residual is used to update the state. And the final corrected state now describes the position of the instrument at the current time. We perform a technical evaluation of our tracking system and compare the poses of instrument estimation Com computed by our system with the equivalent poses computed by an outside-in, high-precision optical tracking system. We first measure tracking accuracy in static and dynamic scenarios, where we achieve an error of 1.7 mm and 1.1 degrees in static and 1.9 mm and 1.2 degrees in dynamic settings. Uh, as shown, the tracking error is slightly dependent on the distance of the instrument from the HoloLens. With the highest accuracy, between 20 and 60 centimeters. Since for our application, a rather close operating range of instruments can be assumed, this is feasible. It is also evident that the dynamic tracking is slightly less accurate than the static tracking, which is caused by an undersampling of motion and partial self-occlusions in the SCAT EKF tracking. We also compare our SCAT-based tracking with our stereo tracking only and with tracking of a commonly used image fiducial and Aruco marker. The Aruco marker is tracked monoscopically using the video camera of the HoloLens. Um, it is evident that our SCAT based approach outperforms the monoscopic marker tracking by a large margin. During our experiments, we also experienced the already mentioned advantages of spherical marker tracking over image tracking, like higher robustness to occlusions and different viewing angles. The accuracy of the stereo-only path is very strongly dependent on the instrument distance. This is caused by hardware limitations given by the stereo configuration within the HoloLens. Tracking with SCAD can mitigate this to some extent. Um, <coughs> it does so by filtering noise in the movement and measurement over time and by minimizing the reprojection error over time. Uh, furthermore, thanks to our efficient implementation, the SCAT has the fastest runtime of all three approaches of only 1.5 milliseconds per frame, and therefore it easily achieves real-time performance. So to conclude, we presented a method for inside out six degrees of freedom tracking of marker spheres using only the HoloLens 2 as hardware. So our system can be seen as a drop-in replacement of applications which use optical outside-in tracking. We chose um, surgical navigation as an example. With our system, a surgeon wearing the HoloLens can track the familiar marked tools but without any external tracking. Our tracking system achieves real-time performance while approaching the reference precision of conventional surgical navigation systems of below one millimeter in translation and one below one degree in rotation. With that, we think it could already be used 
for interventions with submillimeter preciseness is not strictly required. Thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to answering any questions.